Welcome to our service here at Glorious Church Training Center. We are getting ready to go live and be with Pastor David as he brings the message. Get your Bibles and paper and pens out and be ready to take notes at this broadcast. God bless. Because the reality is, is God is chiseling things out of our life. God loves us so much. He does not want us to stay where we've been, but he wants us to go forward in the things that he has for us. Amen. But unfortunately, in this world, I mean, no, there is tribulation. In this world, there are things that don't come to pass that we really believe in God for. And there are times when we expect God to move mightily. And sometimes maybe he doesn't move the way we think. How many know it's not God that needs adjusted? It's us. That needs to learn how to adjust. As I've been teaching on the Holy Spirit. And the leading of the Holy Spirit. I'm teaching a sermon today called. Flesh versus Spirit. Say that with me. Flesh versus Spirit. You know the flesh and the soul realm. Really wants to rule the spirit realm. You know the reality is. is Paul made a statement in Romans chapter 8. And verse number 14. And this is a foundational verse. I hope you get into your spirit. In Romans chapter 8. And verse number 14. Uh, if, you know, if you have your Bibles, I pray that you'll turn there. Because how many know a good friend will always turn you to the book? I'll say that again. A good friend will always turn you to the book. Amen. Um, Romans chapter 8 and verse number 14. Paul says, For as many who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Or you can actually say the daughters of God. Because how many know when, when God writes about sonship or when God writes and uses these terms, he's talking about his image, his created image. Amen. Both male and female. Amen. It's very important you understand this. But one of the things that Paul brought out in verse number 14, he said, those who are led by the Spirit are sons of or daughters of God. That word led um, is a word that means you're driven, you're compelled, or you have an insight to. Okay? It also says that you are sons or daughters of God. That word is the word weos. The word weos means to be grown up, to be mature, to um follow the leadership of a father amen but then he goes on in verse number 16 and he, he elaborates the other side of being children of God in Romans 8 verse number 16 it tells us the spirit himself and how many know when this comes out the spirit capital s is referring to the holy spirit amen and he says and the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit so that means we have a spirit look up here for a moment I'd like to say it this way the real you is not what I'm looking at. The real you is down on the inside in which you are. Amen. You are a spirit. And the Bible says, Paul speaking, that the spirit, God's spirit, bears witness with our spirit. So it has nothing to do with head knowledge. It has nothing to do with feelings. It has everything to do with leadership of who you are and him leading you. Amen. So think of it this way. Here's your spirit. This is the real you on the inside. This is your soul, your mind, will, and emotion. It's what you think. It's your intellect. It's what you've experienced. And then this outward is your feelings. Say feelings. And how many know feelings and emotions can be very strong? If somebody says something to you in maybe an awkward way that really, you know, kind of grieves you, how many know it can hurt? Amen. Um, so what Paul's trying to help us understand here in these scriptures is that, and let's, let's finish that verse. Uh, verse number 16, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are what? Children of God. So Paul identifies two things here. Number one is that there are those who are mature, and there are those that are, the Greek word for, for children is the word technon. And that means babies, toddlers. How many know there are a lot of toddlers in Christianity? And then there are those that are mature or grown up. What's the difference between a toddler and one that's grown up? Well, the toddler has a tendency of rebelling against any kind of direction or action you place towards it. Because the toddler wants to do what the toddler wants to do. But when you became a child of God, you literally turned your life over to God for Him to now lead. Come on, somebody. And when we don't give our lives to God's leadership, we're children walking in the realm of both soul realm and fleshly realm what that keeps us out of the presence of God, out of the, out of the blessings of God. I'm not saying God can't bless you as a toddler. I mean, no, 
children still get blessed? But how many know mature children can handle whatever God puts upon them so that He can bless them with more? You know, as a, as a toddler, God's not going to put a lot of wealth upon you unless you mature in understanding how wealth operates. Why? Because God wants to use that wealth for the production of the kingdom of God. And if you're a child or, or, or a, a technon, then what happens is you don't know how to handle it correctly. And so there's many levels of growing up in life. And Paul's trying to help us that we've got a battle going on between flesh and between spirit. And we've got to understand how this operates so that we can let God chisel away the things that are in our life that keep us from really following and serving Him. That's why I like that video so well. It's because it really shows you there's some stuff that needs to come off. I kind of like this eight pack though, didn't you? Thought that was pretty good. Amen. But remember, when you became a child of God, it's like I shared last week. It's like Pastor Linda gave me her 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 uh, uh, what do you call it? What do you call that you're wearing? Your poncho. Yeah, she gave me her poncho last week, and when she gave it to me, it became mine. I mean, no, when you are given something, it becomes that other person's that's been given to. Amen. And so once I have her poncho, which is now mine, I can do whatever I want with it. And so if I take her poncho and throw it on the ground and stomp all over it, she can't get mad at me. Why? Because it doesn't belong to her anymore. When you became a child of God, you are now in the hands of the master and he rules. You don't. And if God rules your life and he's master over your life, you need to realize there's some stuff in the fleshly realm and the soulish realm that is keeping you from the leadership of God. And so we've got to learn how to get the leadership of God back in our lives so that we can now operate where God needs us. Come on, somebody. And so I'm asking him today, God, chisel away the things that keep us from you so that we can walk with you. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, he says, and Paul speaking, I want you whole spirit, soul, and body. And how many know your, your soul and your body cannot be whole without the leadership of the spirit? Because how many know the intellect works off what you've experienced, what you felt, what people have said, disappointments you've had with yourself, disappointments you've had with others, past experience, because that's all intellect. It's knowledge trying to work out salvation. And the flesh, because it's so tender and has emotional turmoils in it, that if something is too hot or it's too cold, it's too loud, it's too long, I didn't like the way they made me feel, I I felt uncomfortable, I walked by my feelings because this is what I feel, don't you understand how I feel? And the reality is, saints, that's not God. Even though those are real, even though the intellect, the soul realm understands there's been experiences, and even though your feelings have emotions and you've had circumstances that's caused you to feel certain things, the reality is, is God wants you to get beyond that leadership. God wants you to begin to walk according to His leadership so that when you have to deal with things in the soul realm or the fleshly realm, you'll be more apt to do it. Amen? Because I'll be honest, like him, there's a lot of stuff that needs to still come out of me. But I'm learning how to adjust to the leadership of the Spirit because I know that the leadership of the Holy Spirit is vital for the purpose in my life. Amen? I shared last week the difference between I brought uh, Cindy up, I I brought uh, Jeanette up, and I brought uh, Sister Jo up. And you saw the differences. You know, we had them placed higher and lower than the other. And we talked about the the fleshly realm, the body realm, being the one that always wants to dictate your life. Then you've got the soulish realm that that we, we talked about that is always trying to figure out your life. And then we've got the spirit realm that is always trying to follow the leadership of God, but it has a problem because the soul realm and the fleshly realm wants to rule. Why is that? The, really, the reason why that is, is let's use me as an example. I'm 63 and a half years old. And for 33 and a half years of my life, actually, I'm going to say this again, 63 and a half years of my life, I have done nothing but rule in my soul realm and my flesh realm. I'm 63 and a half. I had to deal with soul and I've had to deal with flesh. But when I was 33 and a half, I got introduced to God through Jesus Christ and the saving grace of the cross. And upon that, I got filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak in tongues. And now, for the last 30 years, I've had an opportunity to build my spirit man against my 63 and a half year old fleshly soulish man. And how many know that 
uh, if you don't continue to build your spirit man on a regular basis, the soul and the flesh will rule. Oh, come on. You know, the alarm clock goes off five more minutes. You know, we talked last week about, you know, how we have a tendency, how coming to get up and read the word, but you got to get that coffee first. But then you get the coffee and you're having that cup of coffee and you're thinking, well, I need to read the word, but oh, I got to see what the weather is because I'm working outside today. So you get the weather report and time ends up slipping away and you go, oh man, I've got to get in the shower. You know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden you're coming out and go, oh, I better grab a donut or, or something healthy to eat on my way out because I've got to go to work. But your spirit man's going, what about me? You know, I, I said this last week. Can you imagine only giving your flesh a half a sandwich a week? I guarantee you it's going to scream. Amen? But imagine the other way around. You give God one day a week to spend time with Him and you give your soul and your flesh six days a week and you're expecting the voice of God to surpass the voice of you. I mean, really, saints, you need to understand that, you know, 80-some percent of the time, I don't know the numbers, but I'm going to say 85% of the time to really to follow the leadership of God is following the leading of God. Let's say, you know, 12 to 13% is following that little, still, small voice. And maybe 2 to 3% of your life is God says, Thus saith the Lord. So most of your life isn't about, wow, I heard this booming voice of God. It's about following the leading, the tug, that push on the inside that God is leading you a certain way. Or it's that little, still, small voice that if you don't get quiet enough to listen, you know, it's that, you know, you're, you're walking along and, and you look like yesterday, I'll give you a little example of myself and I have to really be in tune because I'm walking along and I've read my word and I've got a little tiny book that I love to read because it talks about the Holy Spirit and the promises of God every day and and I looked down and I saw that book there but I just read my word and I just experienced some great stuff with the Lord and all of a sudden I heard this little still small voice go you haven't read that yet see it isn't performance it's relationship and I have to be honest with you I ignored it and I went on to do other things that I needed to do that day and all day long, that, that little, still, small voice kept haunting me. Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you do that? You know, the Bible says that if we continue to neglect the spirit leadership of God, that we will sear him. We will harden ourselves to the leadership of God. And I wonder how many Christians have come to a place to where they're just not even hearing that little, still, small voice, let alone the unction of God. It's time for us to stop and let God chisel what needs to be chiseled. And to begin to listen to what God wants us to hear because God's got some great things for each and every one of us. Things that one, He wants to go beyond our imagination or even our thought, what we could even think. How many want to live in that realm? The world is waiting for you. They don't want your feelings. They don't want your flesh. They want what God is saying. What God is, how many here want what God's saying and doing? Well, how much more to a world that doesn't know Him? But all we do is we give them our flesh. We give them our anger. We give them our strife. We give them our opinion. We give them our religious concepts. And we call it God. Let me tell you, saints, in dealing with any person in this world and in this life, it's always best to know what God thinks over what you think. I promise you that if you're following what God thinks over what you think, you'll never do it wrong. Because how many know God doesn't do anything wrong? And so it's so important that we begin to understand this. You know, what you feed leads. You feed your flesh, your flesh will rule. You feed your soul realm to just so that you can feel good about yourself and everything that's going on. How many know it's going to rule? But how many know we got a still small voice down here that needs a lot more food than it's getting? The spirit man must be fed daily for it to outgrow the soul and the fleshly realm. Without that, we will not grow. Without that, we will follow the leadership of our feelings, our emotions, our thoughts, and our abilities, and we'll say, look what God did. Well, if it's in your power to do it, it wasn't God. I'm not saying that God can't use a job or your abilities to give you needs that you have, or maybe nice homes and nice cars and all this stuff, but how about if we go deeper and start following the leadership of God and see what happens? That's where Paul's taking us. Matter of fact, in Romans chapter 8, and John, I'm going to be skipping around a lot. Chapter 8, verse 1, it says, And now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So, so how many know there's no condemnation? There may be conviction by the Holy Spirit, but you're not going to be condemned. I mean, no, the devil wants to condemn you, destroy you. God wants to revive you. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Here he goes. He's identifying. You have a choice here. Flesh, carnality, 
or spirit. Look, let's read on. He says, For the law of the Spirit is life. Uh, life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. So if we walk by the Spirit, how many know we're freed from legalism? For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sin in His own Son in the likeness of a sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. So how did Jesus deal with your flesh? He died for you and everything that you did that was off course. Look at the next verse. He says that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but what? So what is, what is Paul trying to say? Paul's trying to say is, we've got to learn to walk by the Spirit. Look at the next verse. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. We have a choice. It is a choice to listen and follow God. It's a choice to listen and follow your flesh. I tell you what, saints, my flesh likes to be comfortable. My flesh don't like it when I'm real cold. My flesh don't like it when it gets hungry. My flesh don't like it when somebody slaps me up the side of the head. Spiritually, I'm saying. Physically, sometimes I might need it. (laughs) My flesh likes things that are comfortable to my palate, my taste. My flesh likes to take longer showers. My flesh likes to eat good food. And my flesh screams when it ain't comfortable. And so does yours. I'm not alone here, even though I'm talking about me. We have to make a choice, as Paul has said, because the Bible goes on in verse number 6. It says, for for to be carnally minded is death. We're killing ourselves walking in the flesh. We're killing ourselves not walk, by not walking in the Spirit. Look what he says. For, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I don't know about you, but I want life and peace. And I'm learning how to do that. But one of the things that I'm learning also is the fact that when I begin to deny my, my, my fleshly realm... For the spirit realm, I spend longer with the Lord, longer in prayer, longer in reading, longer in praying in the spirit. I spend more time in, in really seeking him. My flesh gets uncomfortable. I mean, you know, if you sit in a place too long, you get uncomfortable. But then I began to realize that my soul realm began to get uncomfortable too. Why? Because it was so used to ruling. It was so used to telling my flesh realm what to do and, and, you know, all the activities that I have and all the agendas that I would put into it and all the organizational skills that I had and all the abilities I was able to put into it. And then all of a sudden, when I began to feed my spirit man, my soul man was like, why am I feeling this way? Why am I going through this? Why does everything seem so out of place? Why isn't things flowing like it used to? Saints, you're in transition to a move of God. And it's uncomfortable. Man, you, you know, you go along. And you, how many years gone along and it's like you really love the Lord, but all of a sudden that bad day comes, your flesh and your emotions are just going haywire. You know, I just, I just don't feel right. There's just something down inside of me that's not working right. And I just don't know what to do about it. Saints, it's your spirit man coming alive and trying to separate you from that flesh and solely realm that's trying to rule. So what do you do when you feel awkward? You feel out of place. You feel like things aren't going right. You get into the Word. You find a place with God. And you grow up into a weos of God. Are you hearing this? It's not easy. It's a fight. You know, it's like, it's like going to the gym. How many know to build muscles in the gym, you've got to press one more extra time past what you did the last time? Because there has to be a tearing of the muscle for the muscle to begin to realize it's about to grow. Do you know your spirit is like a muscle? And when you exercise your spirit, you need to take it a little bit farther every time. Why? Because who wants to walk in the spirit? Oh, it's it's an exercise program that's going to cause a little bit of pain. But I promise you, the more you stretch your spiritual muscles, the stronger you're going to get in the spirit. I remember Todd White Uh, When I first met him over here at uh, Victory, when he came in, one of the things he said was in his life was, he said, when I first realized how powerful God was and how much he wanted to use in me, he said, I went around laying hands on every person I could because I knew I was supposed to release healing. He said, but nothing happened. He said, man, I felt awkward. My soul was off. My flesh was like, oh boy, here we go again. What happens if God doesn't move? What happens if God does move? And so he continued to press in and he started praying for people with headaches. And all of a sudden, after a lot of trial and error, a lot of pressing into God, a lot of seeking God in his word, knowing that healing is part of the children's bread and we're supposed to go lay hands on the sick. And he began to confess the word and get the word in him. And he began to start seeing headaches being healed. 
Then the Lord started speaking to him about, about impairments. And then he started speaking to him about eyes. And he started speaking to him about laying hands on those who have deaf ears. And all of a sudden, miracles began to become a part of his life. Why? He was spiritually exercising the spirit man and stepping out of the flesh and the carnality of man that keeps us from the presence of God. Are you seeing this? You know, Romans ten seventeen says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So, let me ask you a question. When you got saved, did the spirit that bears witness with your spirit that you're children of God come into your flesh? Okay. So, when you got saved, when the spirit of God actually caused you to realize that you were a child of God, did he come into your intellect? No. When Jesus came into your life and bore witness with his spirit and your spirit, he came into your spirit, man. That's what renewed you. Why? Because your flesh can't get saved. Your carnality can't get saved. Oh, it can be controlled, but it can't get saved. What gets saved? You. You get saved. And so guess what? If you're going to walk by the Spirit, the the capital S Spirit, and He's going to bear witness with your Spirit, then you've got to feed your Spirit with the Spirit and the Word of God. Because it's the Word of God that's going to cause you to grow. What causes your physical body to grow? Exercise, eating, Come on, drinking too much sugar, it'll cause you to grow physically, right? Well, how about your spirit, man? What are you doing? And this is my question to you today. What are you doing to build your spirit, man? I mean, you got to remember, faith comes by hearing, okay? So guess what? The, the fleshly one has got an ear and he hears. And the intellectual, the soulish one, it's also got an ear and it hears. Would you agree? So when you're affected emotionally, how many know it heard or felt? If you're affected soulishly, it hears, it processes, it understands what that person did or didn't do or whatever it was. But how about your spirit man? How does your spirit man hear when the Bible says that the fleshly man and the carnal man cannot understand the things of God? That means you've got to feed the spirit man with the things of God. Because the only way the spirit man can grow is with the things of God. And the only way the things of God can lead you is that you've got to feed enough into your spirit man so you can feel the leadership, not of the flesh, not of the soul, but of that inward being that's inside of you. Because that's why Paul said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the word. Oh, we can quote that scripture and claim it and, and, you know, blab it and grab it kind of ministry. But the reality is, how big is your spirit? Because if it's just a still little voice that you don't listen to, it's not greater than he that is in the world. Until you connect with the things of God and God's leadership, you'll never experience the fullness that he has for you. Saints, I'm telling you, we're getting stretched. Mountains are moving. Things are changing in our lives. Why? Because we're not staying where we've been. I'm telling you, saints, this is not a proper place for you if you don't want to grow. There's a lot of churches out there that people can go to and be comfortable. Oh, come on. They feed their flesh. Lights, camera, action. I'm not saying it's bad, but if that's your entertainment, that you feel comfortable with God, shame on you. It's not about the great music, even though it can be good. It's about what's it doing to your spirit, man. What's it doing to tear those spiritual muscles? What's it doing to cause you to work the weights of God into your life so that you can become a spiritual giant for God? Does this make any sense to anybody? Because this is where God has taken this church and this is what I'm going to be speaking on all, all year long is how to grow your spirit man, how to become spiritual giants, how to follow the leadership of God. Saints, faith comes by and, and, and the what? The word of God. So if you want to grow your spirit man, you need, I'll tell you the greatest thing you could do at night because your spirit never sleeps. Put on a tape player or CD player or, or get out your, your Google and Google play the book of Acts all night. Play the whole New Testament all night. Feed your spirit man. How many know while you're sleeping, your spirit man's growing? Faith comes by and the word of God. It doesn't come any other. Where is faith? Is faith in your flesh? Is faith in your soul? No, faith is in your spirit. So if you're going to grow your spirit man, you got to grow your faith. And to grow your faith, you got to be in his word. You've got to be living out of his word, out of his leadership. Uh, leadership. The Bible says in Joshua 1.8, you put that up, John? Joshua 1.8. Because saints, we're going to build the spirit man here. 
Joshua 1 8. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe all to observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, I'll say that again, for then, say that with me, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. How many wants good success? So what do we have to do? We have to meditate. We have to, it's really actually a term of a, ch- of a cow chewing its cud. Do you know that a cow has how many stomachs? Is it six? Three? And do you know that they keep rechewing what they've already chewed? And that's what that word meditate means. It means to keep rechewing what you've already chewed. You know, I hear people all the time say, well, I went to that church and he preached the same sermon he preached last week. Well, maybe you need to chew on it some more. Because let me tell you what, that was the flesh and the soulish realm saying, I want something different. Wait a minute. You don't need anything different. You need what feeds your spirit, man. Amen? Meditate on God's Word. Be a doer of the Word. Put the Word first place and then instantly obey it. That is so important. I'll say that again. Meditate on God's Word. Be a doer of the Word. Put the Word first and then watch when He speaks. Be be quick to instantly obey. Because if you don't instantly obey, you're going to miss opportunities of God. And you're going to get to a point to where He's going to speak and you're not listening. Amen? I believe Joshua 1.8 is really the formula to spirit growth. I think Joshua 1.8 should be on your page every morning when you get up. I'm going to meditate upon the word. I'm going to chew upon the word. Because if I continue in the word, it will make me, it'll lead my path and it'll make me prosperous in all that I do. Say the word. I think the body of Christ has a real problem. I call it half or maybe three quarter truths. I'll say it again. Half or three quarters truth. We want a hundredfold blessing, right? We're just speaking stuff out. God's going to do this. God's going to do that. God's going to do this for me. Thinking that we're fully going to get it. And there is truth that when God says he's going to bless you financially, how many know he can bless you financially? If God says he's going to heal you, how many know he can heal you? But the key is keeping the word before you. The Bible tells us in the the book of Mark and Matthew about the 30, 60, and hundredfold. How many believe in God for a hundredfold? Well, if you haven't been able to believe him for a 30-fold, how do you ever expect to get to a 100-fold? If you haven't, you know, the Bible says, Hebrews chapter 11, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Okay? Now, the the scripture starts out in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. If you put that up, John, I'm just really following the Spirit of God today because there's so much more I want to share with you, but I think this will really help you today. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1. Now, faith is the substance. Now, I want to say this before we go any farther. A lot of times we misquote this scripture. Now, faith is. Wait a minute. That word now is not the word right now. Say, well, pastor, what do you mean? It says now faith is. Saints, you've got to read scripture in context. Go to um, Hebrews chapter 10 verses. I think it's 38 and 39. It's the last two verses in Hebrews chapter 10. Look at this. Now, the just shall live by, now, how many know the just are those who have been born again? Okay, they shall live by, okay, so if you're going to live by faith, you've got to build the spirit man, because that's where faith is. If the spirit man is weak, how many know it's little faith? You know, all healings in the Bible, almost two-thirds of healings in the Bible was all about faith, according to your faith. Yeah, so here we want the 30, 60, 100 fold, but we're not building our spirit man to walk in the kind of faith that gets it, and I'll read that to you in a moment. It says, but now faith, uh, now the just shall live by, what? How does faith come? The word of God. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in, I'm going to say them. If anybody draws back, what is he saying? I love what the, what the uh, video showed. You're either moving towards God or you're moving away from God. There is no stationary Christian that just sits there. You're either in the flow to grow or you're out of the flow of growth. Perfect example this morning. So it says, if you draw back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Look at the next verse. But we are not those who draw back to perdition, but to those who believe to the saving of our souls. What is he saying? We're pressing forward. We're not drawn back. We know where we're at because he saved our soul. And we believe that all those things that are possible that he's given us will come to pass. And then he turns on to chapter 11, verse 1 and says, now faith you see why now in the hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 is not now it's a prerequisite to something that you need to be doing so that you can begin the process so now faith is a substance of the things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen 
How many know faith is a substance? When you're walking and having your spirit man alive in the, in the depths of the spirit and it's all in faith, I'm going to tell you what, there's something you can hold on to. There's something that is so real that nobody can take it out of your life. I'll tell you this morning when I heard the Lord speak to me and said mountains are moving, this is a mountain moving day, that was down in my spirit. And let me tell you what, I can hold on to that. Now, if you can't hold on to that because you don't have faith enough to believe that this is mountain moving day, then I'm going to tell you, you're going to be hindered in mountain moving days. But if you can believe that that was the word of God, it's substance that's down on the inside of you. And that substance will move those mountains. Amen. It's not a blab it, grab it kind of ministry. It's getting a hold of the substance. It's hearing what God has to say. And it's applying those things that, that really give you that, that fullness of knowing that God is up to something good. Faith, where's faith? In your spirit is a substance. It's not a mind game. It's not a speak it game. And I think Christianity has missed it a lot with the blab it and grab it ministries. Because they haven't taught to build the spirit man. So that when they speak, they're actually loosening the, the words of God. That change things. We know when God says something. It's going to happen. When you say something. It may not. But when God's speaking through your spirit. Because you have faith. In your spirit. And a substance. Get ready. Because faith. What? Put that back up John. Chapter 11 verse 1. And I went through a lot of scriptures. That he didn't even get a chance to put up. Faith is what? A substance. A substance. A substance. What is that substance? There's something down on the side of you. That says, I got it. It's not a question. It's an absolute. I knew when the Holy Spirit spoke to me yesterday to pick up that book. I knew it was the Holy Spirit. But my soul realm was interested in doing some other stuff. Come on, saints. When that happens, be quick to repent. Why? Because you need the leadership of God. Remember, he speaks 80 some percent of the time with the leadership. He speaks, you know, 12, 13 percent with with a still small voice. And very seldom do you hear the big voice boom of God. And I mean, no, some people just need to hear the loud sound of God to wake them up. Amen. Say faith is in my spirit and it gives me a substance of the things hoped for. Now thank God for hope because hope deferred makes one most miserable, right? So if you've got a substance down on the inside of you, you've got hope, right? And look what, oh, look what else it says. It says substance of things hoped for and the evidence. What is evidence? I like to call it brick and mortar. When you have a substance down on the inside of you, you got brick and mortar already in place. Even though you can't see it, because, you know, how many know, faith is a substance. It's not what you see, it's what's down on the inside of you. And when you keep the Word coming, hearing, and hearing, and hearing the Word of God, it becomes stronger and stronger where you get a substance, and guess what? You begin to see the evidence before you see the evidence. Are you getting this? The evidence is the brick and mortar of the substance that's down on the inside of you, that you know by faith, because you're walking in the Spirit, that God says that faith will create a substance, something down on the inside that will bring evidence to the eyes that you'll absolutely see it. And you know before you do it, it's coming. Well, he goes on and tells you in Hebrews chapter 11, read it. He talks about Abraham. He talks about Moses. He talks about Barak. He talks about Sarah. He talks about David. He talks about Gideon. He talks about Enoch. He talks about all these men and women of faith that they got a hold of something on the inside. Did it not say with Moses? He said with Moses, or I'm sorry, with Abraham. He said, because Abraham believed He had a substance down on the inside of him to believe that even at 99 years of age and her being at 90 years of age, there was evidence that was going to come forth because of what he had on the inside. And how many know Isaac came forth? Because he believed. He heard the word. He took it. He began to meditate upon it. He began to apply it to his life. And even though Sarah's over here laughing, getting in trouble, Abram is going, oh yeah, that's what God said. And he stood on that promise and it became what God said it was going to be. God will do the same thing with you. Amen? Amen? See, when you build your spirit, man, and faith now brings in the substance, it begins to allow the natural realm to come into place. You know, that's why I love praying in the spirit. I like to say it this way. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, Jude chapter, Jude verse 20, build yourself up in your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit, you're actually putting railroad tracks to what God has prepared for you. See, praying in the spirit has nothing to do with your past. It doesn't even really have a lot to do with your present. It has everything to do with your next step. When you're praying in the Spirit, you're preparing for what God's about to do with the substance that's on the inside of you that's now going to become evidence that was God. Amen? I had a substance on the inside of me when my wife had her stroke. 
And the substance was when I got there, there was an evidence that the doctor's report was not matching God's report. So I believed God's report over the doctor's report, and I began to release the substance that was on the inside, and she rose up out of her sickbed. Amen? Are you hearing me today? I think it's so important that you realize that the spirit man is more important than the fleshly and carnal man. Years ago, um, I was told that I had a disease called rheumatoid arthritis. And I mean, I hurt bad. And I went to the doctor and the doctor tested me and said, oh, yeah. said, you'll be down in a year. I wasn't even in my 30s yet. And I'm like, rheumatoid arthritis the rest of my life? I just, I can't do that. So during that time, I ended up getting saved and get filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm still hurting. I'm out doing jobs. And I mean, just aching really bad. And one day I just said, God, I am tired of this pain. And you spoke in your word that by his stripes I am healed. What am I doing wrong? Because I mean, no, God's not done it wrong. And all of a sudden I heard a still small voice say, drink water, get rid of pop. I'm like... If this is you, God, I'm going to prove it. I go over and get a glass of water. I take one drink off. Now, you have to understand, I've been in pain for three years. One sip, pain gone. Totally. No effects whatsoever. I was so excited because I've been hurting for three years. When I slept, I hurt. When I walked, I hurt. When I sat, I hurt. Didn't matter. I just hurt. And so I got back after lunch. I'm drinking water. First thought was my soul realm, my flesh realm. Man, I sure like those Dr. Peppers. Man, I get my 50 cents out of my pocket and I go over and I punch it in the machine and I look down. Oh, there's Dr. Pepper. Oh, it's in a bottle. (laughs) Grab that baby, pulled it out, opened up the top and I heard the Holy Spirit say, what are you doing? And I realized, my flesh, my carnal man was ruling and taking me back into bondage when I could be set free. I set that bottle of pop right over there on the end of my work table. And I watched that bottle sit there all day while I drank down water. About a year later, I went to a doctor and I was asking the doctor and told him my story. He said, oh yeah. He said, did you not know that the stuff in pop and the sugar in pop will cause dryness in your bones and cause your bones to begin to ache? I didn't know that, but the Holy Spirit did. I heard a story one time of a preacher that had a wife and the wife had uh, MS, a muscular sclerosis. Is that what that is? MS. And so um, she was bedridden. Just literally bedridden. Two years bedridden. So what did he do? He decided that he was going to, like we have, we've got all these books over here in the back. We've got healing scriptures. We've got healing CDs that they speak over you. He just started plugging that into her room where she was sleeping for two years. And one day she heard a little still small voice and said, what do you want to eat? And she thought, I'm really not hungry. And the Holy Spirit said again, hey, If you were in the grocery store and you were walking up and down the aisles right now, what would come to your attention that you would like to eat? So she started imagining the grocery store and and she got over to the fruit section and she looked over and she saw a peach. She said, I'd like to have a peach. And God says, that's exactly what I wanted you to see because it's got vitamin C in it and it'll help heal you. Saints, how many know our body and our spirit knows what we need to keep ourselves healthy? She said she started eating peaches and she started feeling the strength that she didn't have before. So one day she's laying there in bed. Now he kept feeding the, the word to her, feeding the word. How faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. Kept feeding the word to her. And a couple of weeks passed by and she said the Holy Spirit spoke to her again and said, look at this glass. And in the spirit, she looked at this glass and there was this orange substance on the inside. And she said, Lord, what is that? And he said, carrot juice. And she said, why... I, Why would I want carrot juice? He says, it's got exactly what you need that causes the muscular, the MS to begin to neutralize because it wraps itself around nerves. And when the beta carotene, I think is what it is in carrots, when it's actually put out, it begins to coat the nerves and decreases the pain. The Holy Spirit taught. She's totally healed today. She said, there's times where it tries to come back, but I just reminded of what I already got, substance. And I keep the word all the time going, all the time. I can't draw back. Why? Because God has no pleasure. I've got to keep pressing forward. I've got to keep pressing forward. Saints, you've got to keep pressing forward. How does, word, how does faith come? By hearing the word. The second part of hearing the word is understanding the word. If you don't understand the word, how can hearing it make a difference in your life? So you have to not only hear the word, you have to begin to chew on the word. You've got to begin to dissect the word. You've got to begin to learn learn how that word operates so you can understand it. Because once you understand it, it's like a job. You can get hired in on a job. You can go in there and it's all Greek to you. This is Greek and Hebrew, right? It's all Greek or Hebrew to you. 
And But after a couple days of learning and bringing understanding to your knowledge, because you've got a teacher, somebody that's going to teach you, you're going to begin to start operating in that. So what are you doing? You're getting the faith. You're getting taught. You're hearing, you're hearing, you're hearing. And then what are you doing? You're understanding, you're chewing, you're beginning to reason, process, go, wow, this is of God. And then the next thing you do is you begin to apply. I mean, no, faith without works. Are you seeing this? So when you build your faith up and you get that substance of God and you begin to understand that that's of God, just as it was with Abraham, then what happens is you begin to apply and guess what you find? God. Right in the middle of whatever it is you're facing with. Are you seeing this? You've got to build your spirit man up. <laughs> Write these scriptures down and I'm going to close. Psalms 119, 133. The steps of the righteous are directed of the, of the Lord. How? By His Word. Psalms 37, verse 23. Again, steps are directed by the Lord or by the Word. Psalms 119, verse 130. He said, increase your word which gives light to my spirit. Are you seeing this? Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp unto my... Oh, I love this one. Proverbs chapter 4. And I really want to suggest to you to read the whole book of Proverbs chapter 4. Matter of fact, I might... Can I have a few more minutes of your time today? Proverbs chapter 4, I think, is just absolutely profound. Because everywhere where the word instruction, understanding, doctrine, law is, I'm going to put the word in it, okay? Listen to this. My children, hear the word of the Father, and give attention to know the word. For I give you good word, do not forsake my word. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my word and live. Get my word, get understanding or my word, and do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake my word, and she will preserve you. Love my word, and she will keep you. The word is the principal thing, therefore get the word. And in all you're getting, get the word. Exalt the word, for she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. She will deliver to you. Hear my son and receive my word, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of the word. I have led you in right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of the word, and do not not let go of her keep her for she is your life most neglected book in the world and by christians get the word get the word it'll change your life it'll raise your life up to the place that god's always wanted to be amen is this helping anybody today well how do you know that the word will take care of you well let's see philippians says my god shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory i got the word well how do i know that he'll heal me Isaiah 53 said he bore upon his body the stripes, the bruising, the pains, the sufferings. And by his stripes we were healed. Oh, 1 Peter 2.24 says by his stripes we were, oh, got the word. Well, how how do I know my children are going to serve the Lord? What does the scripture say? Joshua says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Acts says that the promise is to my children and my children's children as far off as he would call. Let me tell you what, when you get the substance of his word, you can stand on his promise and you can know that you'll get the results. But you will not do that separate from the word. Oh, let's take it a step farther. And the word became, look what he did for three and a half years. In a fleshly, soulish body, he walked as the word. And everything he touched and everything he spoke to. And he says, greater things you will do than I have done. Get the word. You can't live without it. Amen. Oh, but I'm going to say this. I'm going to close on this. Your flesh is going to scream. Your soul is going to get uncomfortable. It's going to feel awkward. It's going to feel out of place. Like maybe you, you've got some deformity now. <sighs> but realize this. The spirit man can override every bit of it. The spirit man has a substance that will take brick and mortar and put it in its place. And I promise you, when you begin to see God in the greater glory, 
you'll not want any of this other stuff because it tells a different story. The fleshly man, the soulish man, does not tell about the things of God. Oh, I know the fleshly man and the soulish man confess a lot of things about what they believe in God's going to do. But how about when you start experiencing God? Because the spirit man is so tuned in that it's speaking what God has to say and you're getting God results so that now you can tell the real story. Instead of talking about Smith Wigglesworth and Amy Simple McPherson and A.A. Allen and Oral Roberts and all the things they did, hey, let's start talking about, oh, did you hear what happened with Kathy last week or Wayne this week or what's getting ready to happen with Sister Jeanette or Dave comes and says, oh, you wouldn't believe it. The whole, whole place I'm working for, man, the Spirit of God came in and just everybody fell on their face. Why? Because you carry a substance that causes people to want what you have. Why? Because your spirit is drawing their spirit that they don't even know about. And as a result, they're trying to connect. They don't understand it. Why? Because it's carnal and flesh to them. You're just too religious. You're, a, you're, you're just one of these spiritual nuts. No, I'm a child that loves God. And I stay in His Word so that I always have something to give account to, to show off the goodness of God. Amen. I promise you it will be a fight. But how many want 30, 60, 100 fold? Jesus tells the story of the parable about different seeds that are sown. And the first three, they're eaten up or they don't understand it or they're burned up by the cares of the world. But he said, but if you will not only receive my word, retain my word, understand my word, you'll have 30, 60, and 100 fold return come upon your life. And I don't know about you, but that's where I'm going to live. I have made a decision that chisel away because I know you know what needs to come off and start putting in what needs to be put in so that I can begin to experience you. Amen? Did you receive the Word today? Saints, you can never have the Word without receiving the Word. The Word is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He died on a cross because the sin that came into the world caused the world to be in sin and because of sin, we're all dying. And one day, we're all going to meet our Maker. But I want you to understand this, that Jesus came into the world to take away the sin of the world. He, you can't take it away. You've been born into that, and there's no way you can get it out. The only way you can get it out is ask Jesus to come into your life, and He'll now become the sin bearer for you. And all you have to do is confess that He came, died, and rose, and make Him Lord of your life by confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart and saying, Jesus, come into my heart and live here with me. And in doing so, He'll come because His Bible says in Revelation, He stands at the door knocking, waiting for you to let Him in. It's your choice. It'll never be forced upon you. Every individual on the face of this earth has to make that choice because there is a heaven, there is a hell. And God's desire is none to go to hell I say, well, why does he send people? He doesn't. It's because people don't accept him and what he did. And because they don't choose him, they end up choosing a different father. And that one is about ready to be destroyed along with all those who follow. Don't be a part of that kingdom. Be a part of the kingdom of God. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Make him Lord of your life. Allow the Holy Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit to come upon you once you receive. And then after that, find you a good Bible-based church, if it's not the Glorious Church Training Center. Find a place in which you can worship and serve and be stretched. Because without a stretching, you won't go anywhere. Amen? We love you and we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Did you all get blessed today? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for tuning in here today at the Glorious Church Training Center with Pastor David Pazinger. And we are located at 1721 West 7th Street, Suite B, Joplin, Missouri, 64801. And also the phone number is 417-622-9374, which is the office and the Email to get a hold of Pastor David Pazinger is teachtrainsend at gmail.com.